I'm confused because it, it seems like there's actually like a disconnect here because I heard earlier, and I think it was, uh, it was Dylan that mentioned it and Kyle touched on it as well, that a lot of the stuff that's out there right now has better security tools built in. And a lot of these organizations have better security tools. You know, we've got AI enabled stuff coming out. We've got better firewalls than we've ever had. We got cloud security, we got all this stuff going on. But then Kyle mentions he, he just exploited a 12 year old vulnerability. There's a disconnect. Where is this disconnect? I'll, I'll start there again. You know, the, uh, the disconnect is often uh, the follow through. You know, a lot of organizations are going to spend a lot of money, a lot of their IT and their security investments in the best firewalls, the best threat and intrusion prevention, proxies, gateways, endpoint controls, you know, you name it. There is uh, an amazing uh, group of solutions out there today that can go a very, very long way to protecting your systems. But the reality is, is that any one of us can go purchase anything. We can plug it into power, plug it into the network, and that isn't where the job finishes. You know, the best firewalls get slapped in and, and basically uh, get configured with the old, uh, the old config from 10 years ago because it's just easy to get it in and up and running and that type of thing. And uh, the time and diligence isn't spent then on hardening it and configuring it and, and what I like to say, tuning it, you know, actually making sure, testing it, making, making sure that it's catching the types of attacks and things that it should, that it alerts and prevents and all of those things. So, you know, one of the things we didn't really touch on yet of, of the goals of a pen test, or maybe it was back in that definition of a pen test, is that uh, part of the reason for doing pen test is just that, to validate the effectiveness of your controls. You've bought these firewalls and endpoint solutions. Let's make sure that you put them in right and that they actually work as advertised. Yeah, I mean, tuning your products, but also, you know, really understanding them, right? Like understanding their limitations um, and if they need to be tuned, right? So there is no silver bullet. I know that sounds completely cliche, uh, but the point is that you can, you know, only really reduce the overall risk to your organization. You can, you can never actually eliminate it, right? Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I wanted to jump in one more time, too, because a, a thought just came up, and, and Dylan mentioned and Kyle mentioned this before as well, about uh, some of the adversary simulations and things that we're doing with clients. Uh, in that, uh, you know, we can come in and not just do a pen test these days. We, we can sit down with our clients and collaborate and work with them to rerun attacks that a pen tester would perform on their network through their controls while they're live and sitting there watching it. So imagine how much uh, more beneficial it is to you as an IT security person, uh, instead of just receiving a pen test report and saying, you know, hey, we ran these attacks and it worked and we, and we win, you lose, you know, uh, type of thing. We can sit down and run the same attacks then through your controls. You monitor them, you get the opportunity to tune and improve them, you know, Pen testing can be more than just a service that we perform on your behalf and hand you a report. It can become very collaborative and, and really even a, a training exercise, right? You know, if we can show you how uh, attacks move through your network and how to better tune your controls, how to better identify and alert on those types of things, uh, a pen test can be just as much of a training for your defensive team as it is uh, an exercise of finding vulnerabilities.